I'm back with a new beer. New me, new beer. I've been trying to make my studio a little better for making videos. I bought myself a new lens. I got a comfy chair. I'm trying out a new mic setup and yeah I'm just generally trying to make these videos better for you guys as we're all learning we're all learning still here I have been investing what money I have made so far out of this channel back into it like the uh, boss babe <laughs> that I am I'm such a mom entrepreneur hopefully this sounds a bit better hopefully this looks a bit better what if I turn off the other light would that look a bit better? So, so I'm back after recovering from Samuel Leeds and uh, on top of everything that I exposed him as in the aftermath, I also managed to expose him as a foot fetishizing misogynist. I thought, hey, I can't stop there. <laughs> so why not tackle the man who has been described as the uh, final boss of misogynists. Hi, I'm Russell Hartley. I say some divisive shit. How I ended up dating the two girls that I lived with at the same time, part one. Way too pretty to be hanging out at a bar by herself, but I was mystified. Short chain that would hook to a collar around her neck. Girls come to realize that I've been hooking up with both of them. She was a Jewish, blonde Jewish girl. I couldn't tell though, she was even post-op. <laughs> Acid, I mean, the birds do it, the bees do it, but I've never seen bees do anything like that. Or I'll say, oh, I have Mario Kart. Oh, I'll kick your ass in Mario Kart. Oh yeah, prove it. And I do want to say that dating bi girls is great because of the obvious similar interests. I've basically had a three-way with every single girl I've ever dated. Because walking around the streets of Hollywood, I fall in love with a new girl every day. There's that every time you have sex with a new woman, it's a new mare in your stable. Saying the things that I say on my channel takes balls. One, two, hard no! Couple hours and this girl's back in my place with her skirt around her torso. Boys will be boys. Um, so you'll get an, so you get access, so. If you join the Patreon, you'll get access to some um, extra little podcasts that I'm making over there. And also you'll get your name sung or rapped at the end of the video. Sign up on the link down below. That's my sponsor for today's video. So I've always wanted to explore the world of pickup artists a little bit. I came across this guy originally on Curtis Connor's channel and then Leon Lush's channel. Uh, so it's not like this guy hasn't been spoken about before on a kind of scratchy surfacey level, but you know what we like to do on this channel. We like to lube ourselves up and uh, insert ourselves deep into the sales funnel. Now, Russell Hartley first gained a following on TikTok where he ended up getting quite a bit of negative attention. So if we scroll all the way back to the beginning, it starts out with some pretty boring content about him working out how to automate his corporate job through coding. How I completely automated my corporate job and made a passive income for myself, part one. So he didn't have to do any work to get paid and blah, 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 blah. But what does Russell do now he has all of this spare time? And some of you might go, well, did you use that time wisely? Did you like invest and you build a side project and all this stuff? Nope. Basically, I spent that whole time picking up women. I mean, I'm a young guy in LA. My job was completely automated. I was doing great. And women can really waste your time. I'm looking at you, TikTok. Women. So Russell goes on to document his various escapades in the following TikToks. Or I'll say, oh, I have Mario Kart. And every girl, for some reason, every girl under the age of 25 is like, oh, I'll kick your ass in Mario Kart. Oh yeah? Prove it. <laughs> We've never once played Mario Kart, not once. Now, I must admit, if a guy challenged me to Mario Kart in a bar, I would honestly just jump straight into an Uber with him. But you will bet your bottom f dollar that the only thing that we will be doing when we get back to his house is uh, playing Mario Kart. If we get back to his apartment and he doesn't whip out a Nintendo Switch, then I am going to assume that he is Ted Bundy and he has escaped from the grave and I am out of there. I can imagine though, if Russell got me back to his apartment after promising Mario Kart, and then he just runs off into the bedroom, and he probably will come out just in his best pair of boxer shorts by Prada and just a rose in his mouth because he lives in a 14 year old's fantasy. Um, yeah, I'm Luigi, who do you wanna be? We've never once played Mario Kart. You, you need to- Not once. You need to pick a character. We've never once played Mario Kart, not uh, once. You might wanna you might want to put a shirt and some trousers on. Um, I can... Not once. I can get quite violent during this game. And then I'd force him to play 
eight hours of Mario Kart with me and the only thing that would be getting wet and slippy would be his cart tires on my banana peels. I'd be hitting him with their blue shells and blue balls all at the same time. <laughs> And these girls are like Eastern European, like Russian Romanians, like descendants of gladiators. Hi guys, so today we're gonna be doing my 23 and Me result. Okay, so it says 100% gladiator. That would explain my shield and my swords. And this Colosseum. And my father's bloody murder in front of a cheering crowd. But this whole world of content kind of mesmerizes me like he seriously thinks he's god's gift doesn't he personally i don't find him particularly attractive this guy is like james bond in his own head in his mind he just walks into a room and every single woman's just like baby you okay i've got to go and get a bucket and a mop what it's like living with two girlfriends part two i would sit on the couch and they had these little seats like beside me and they would like use my legs as pillows on either side that was pretty cool stuff like that but girls don't get along one-on-one -on -one forever eventually there's going to be some like cattiness and all that stuff and as the man in the relationship you got to come in and like break it up and mediate because sometimes they'll both be mad at me and they'll both be like quietly cleaning and shit and like kind of on the same team and i can hear them talking about me like in the bathroom and shit you know what i'm saying like that sort of stuff so what i started doing is i put us all in a group chat so you weren't allowed to text me outside of the ring but they would still kind of do it and you want to know the best remedy for real things started to get tense or people started to get angry with each other I would just boom. Let's get to the bedroom right now, and it absolutely worked That's why the relationship lasted so long if you make them finish It works. Oh, hey Katie. Katie. Hi. Um, I was just thinking I, I, I know we're both in like happy happy relationships with men who respect us and don't value us on our looks alone or anything But I was just thinking like do you want to hear me out here? Share one misogynist who does not respect either of us? No, no, like I'm serious? I'm serious. What it's like being a bachelor in real life, part four. So in the previous part, I mentioned having a stable. So what this means if you're a bachelor is that every time you have sex with a new woman, that's a new mare in your stable. So not my last girlfriend, but the girlfriend before that was actually bi. And I do want to say that dating bi girls is great because of the obvious similar interests. But just because you have similar interests doesn't mean that your bi girlfriend isn't going to be super jealous of other girls because she absolutely will be. But jealous or not, that still doesn't mean that you can't capitalize on her sexuality. And anyway, why don't we get this kind of content for women to pick up guys? Should I start a TikTok account for that? How to fetishize by men, part one. So what you've got to do is treat men like cows on your farm. Keep them on rotation. Just keep milking them and milking them until they're bone dry. But what you've got to do is find two bisexual cows so they'll let you milk them both at once. What it's like to have two boyfriends, part one. The really great thing about having two boyfriends is that they'll leave you alone during the day when you're doing your really important woman stuff, like recording TikToks for 14 year old boys in your bathroom. And your boyfriends will just leave you alone for the day to do whatever they do, like jujitsu or home brewing beer or whatever guys do. Now you're gonna go through this honeymoon period where both guys are just gonna be fighting to have your legs wrapped around them but it's not all rainbows and waps forever, believe me. So anyway, as soon as I turn up to bars, all men start dancing like strippers straight away. Two dudes started getting off with each other just to get my attention. And I don't mind when guys get little enhancements to their little friends down there. I mean, I think that shit's dope. Anyways, I invited him back to my place, which isn't so hard for the promise of a game of FIFA on a PS4. I don't even own a PS4. A bar is not the only place you can pull guys though. Did you know that they also just walk around outside during the day? It's wild. Yeah, they actually leave the house and do their own thing. Normal dancers don't make faces like this. Why is this exclusive to TikTok dancing? So Swell Entertainment did a whole video about why she thinks Russell is lying about all of his escapades on his TikToks. And she says that it seems like he's lying because of all the like unnecessary details and embellishments that he adds to his stories. Or for those of you that have never lied before, when your lie has too much detail, it's pretty clear it's a lie. I do agree with her that the embellishments do kind of make the story seem a bit exaggerated. 
and quite possibly untrue. So I was going to Taco Tuesday with my boys at Toca Madera on 3rd Street. But I also think it's the types of embellishments that he uses. Now you have to remember that this guy is trying to sell courses to lonely, naive and young guys. And these TikToks are Russell's first point of contact for these guys to pour them into his sales funnel. We've all seen the formula before, you've got to give away loads of information for free, but then hold back just enough so that people feel like they need more to get that extra push to be able to do it for themselves. And that normally comes in the form of some sort of one-to-one -one coaching. So there's a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary V. And it's all about how to sell on social media. So the jab, jab, jab is like the content or the value that you give out to your prospective customers. And then the right hook is the sale that you pitch at the end. So these TikToks are all basically Russell's japs. And again, we've seen it all before. You need to create some sort of formula that makes it sound easy to the layman, but <laughs> glosses over some major, <sighs> major issues. So the stories that Russell tells seem to me incredibly well curated to sell to anybody who might be the type of person who would want to sign up for his courses. The potential client might have like a type of woman that he finds attractive, or he might have a particular goal with women in mind, a particular fantasy that he might want to fulfill. So what does Russell do? He always makes sure to list the ethnicity, the hair color, the type of woman, and it happens to be a different ethnicity or type or hair color of woman each time. I used to see this Russian girl, tall, skinny like a fawn, beautiful. I mean, Russian girls are like descendants of gladiators. I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous. And I spied on the other side of the table a blonde Asian girl with fake cherries <laughs> making out with one of her friends. And I'm like, perfect. And a six foot one, well-dressed white guy hitting on a blazion is like shooting with a handicap. I mean, it's child's play. And the thing that I love about Jewish girls is though they might have the nose, they usually have the chest to match. I matched with this beautiful Latina girl, you know, sometimes I go south of the border. And because they were both hot white girls, well, one of them had a shot of mocha. So I hit it off with the Hooters girl. I mean, that's what I do, baby. And these girls are like Eastern European, like Russian Romanians, like descendants of gladiators. A partner at a law firm, she went to Harvard Extension School. She was a Jewish, blonde Jewish girl. I couldn't tell though, she was even post-op. <laughs> and the type of hookup is always a different kind of fantasy that someone might have. Something that a young boy might fantasize about because he's only ever seen that in films or in other online videos before. And we did the things you normally do at that age, you know, sneak off under the bleachers in my car in an open field. That's, you know what I'm saying. So I would bolt her with a master lock to a short chain around her neck. And when I say short, I mean real short. And after things, let's say concluded, I would just go in the other room and leave her chained there for hours. He also reduces women down to a sort of collective hive mind, like all pickup artists do. Like there's some sort of combination lock on a woman's brain and he's found the secret code, which is a toxic mindset to have because it reduces us down to something that's not human, like a dog you can train. And we're more like cats. We're all complicated and different and we chase shiny objects around the house at 3 a.m. and uh, we don't give a f about that expensive suit you're wearing, we'll still get our hair all over it. I'm carrying out these groceries to my car and some girl comes up and taps me on the shoulder and I'm like holding these groceries and she says, hey, uh, my friend thinks you're cute. And I look across the way and I see an ombre blonde girl who's tanned like a baked potato dressed head to toe in a Hooters outfit. Tanned like a baked potato. I've never been to a tanning salon before, so excuse my ignorance, but is that how we choose which color we want to a tanning salon? Welcome to Tasty Tan, Mom, and what shade are we going for today? We've got milky tea, not milky tea, uh, peanut butter, mushroom soup, uh, toaster set to number three, toaster set to number five, milky chocolate, microwave potato, baked potato, or overdone McCain's oven chips. So my theme park date with a girl that I barely knew turned into a date with me and four girls. And that's where I thrive. 
And we're drinking and riding rides and bonding, but it was a Tuesday, so everybody Ubers home at the end of the night, including my date, but I invite Stephanie to come back to my place to the hot tub. And I learned that Stephanie had a hidden talent. This girl could hold her breath so long she could swim in the Olympics. So anyways, the next day I invite her over so our dogs can have a play date. And things proceed for about 0.5 seconds, and she's like, oh, my jaw, I don't want to. Hard no! I don't know if Americans will get this reference, but it's so much like listening to Jay from In Between Us. <laughs> or a Google AI bot that's programmed to be a Chad. I am T, bathroom with ominous extra door. Russell stands in front of a sink with a smartphone. He is dressed in a suit yet has no reasons to leave the house today. His teeth are as white as the Nike socks his mom freshly laundered for him. Russell, today I went to a dorm room party with 9.3 girls. They all battled in a wet t-shirt contest to go on a date with me. There were no losers. This week I have seen a total of 11 cherries. Cherries is a euphemism for breasts. Breasts follow me on Instagram. Russell looks around. He is still alone. Russell, last week I pulled a girl from Mars. Let's just say she can hold her breath long enough to not need the spacesuit while on Earth. Extraterrestrial girls will sweat over tea on the first date if you just ask. Then I went on a date with my second girlfriend from Trinidad and Tobago. She was the color of uncooked potato. Hard no. Girls from Trinidad and Tobago eat three Mario Karts on the first date and make you pay. Then they leave you alone to play with their nails but only if they are brunette. Russell is crying inside. He has not eaten a cherry for three years. He tells us his suit is worth money in order to feel. Balenciaga, Prada, Alexander McQueen, Frank Denham, Alexander McQueen, Theory. But there's probably some 14 year old boys just watching this guy and thinking that he's some kind of demigod. So after Russell got some hate, he tried to defend himself in some of these clarification TikToks later on. And I've never once on any of my videos, on any of my lives said that women are beneath me or men in general, not once. Okay, but you constantly reduce them down to a score that you give them for their looks, right? And as women get older, their value starts to decrease for lots of reasons. I mean, they're getting older. They're not looking as pretty as they did when they were 20 or whatever. And some of my friends were dating, you know, hard tans, but they were all jealous of me because I was dating a 16. And that time that you said that it was a massive red flag that a beautiful woman was stood on her own at an expensive hotel bar. Gorgeous, like way too pretty to be hanging out at a bar by herself, but I was mystified. I chinked her glass and we started chatting and eventually I said, where are you staying? And she goes, here, like in the hotel. Because she couldn't afford that herself, could she? Or the time that you approached a woman and you assumed that she was a secretary and not a lawyer, even though she was at a law firm. And as she's walking by, I said, I didn't know the DOD still hired distracting secretaries. And pretty abruptly she goes, I'm not a secretary, I'm a lawyer. She kind of gave me a bit of an attitude, and you guys might not know this, but lawyers have huge egos, especially the young ones. So what this means if you're a bachelor is that every time you have sex with a new woman, that's a new mare in your stable. The list goes on. So oftentimes in my stories, on my TikTok videos, or even in real life, I often use what's called metaphor. And since Curtis and others seem to not understand what metaphor is, I'm going to explain it. Metaphor means to speak in a way that paints a picture so that your listeners can understand. <laughs> yes, we know what a metaphor is, Russell. The problem is that it is a metaphor that insinuates that women are just objects for you to use. Things that you own. And she was a skinny girl, and I said that I, I like skinny girls in that video. And because I said I like skinny girls, people took that video and said, oh, he's promoting eating disorders. What? <laughs> Well, what you actually said was... And before you jump to conclusions, she wasn't bulimic or anorexic. It wasn't anything like that. She's not one of those super duper skinny girls, though I like those too. But I like those girls too. Insinuating, I would say that you find girls with EDs attractive. And then you go on to say that EDs are terrible, but you only list the reasons that they're terrible that are to do with women's looks and not the psychological trauma. Absolutely wreck and destroy your health. I mean, your hair will fall out, your skin looks bad, your teeth fucking fall out. It's terrible. I don't promote eating disorders. And dating models in LA is great because you never have to worry about them being like out of shape or gaining weight or whatever because they're already so hard on themselves. It's absolutely perfect. I don't promote eating disorders. Also, on top of that, you changed the story from the original. Originally, you said that she ordered one extra entree. And this bitch orders three full entrees. She gets the same panini that I got. She gets a whole full salad for herself. And she also gets the eggplant parmesan, complete new entree, extra dish, plus a large milkshake. What? And then this girl goes on to order 
three full on entree. Like no joke, she got the equivalent to like a full pizza, a Parmesan dinner, and then like a steak dinner as well. Even the waiter was like, are you gonna eat all that? Now you've added a full pizza and steak dinner to the story to try and defend yourself. None of this makes any sense and it sounds to me like you were lying and you can't remember your story and now you're gaslighting everyone. So many of my comments are about like me, like, oh, you're gay, come out of the closet already, whatever. And since when is being gay like a negative or derogatory thing? And what's worse than that is the majority of these comments are coming from the alt or the LGBTQ plus community. And I live in West Hollywood, which is the LGBTQ plus capital of the world, maybe next to San Francisco. And I have friends that are gay. There's nothing wrong with being gay. Okay, Russell, I don't think we understand again. They're not saying that being gay is a bad thing. They're saying that you are giving off gay vibes because you talk like a man who's never slept with a woman before and that you're so deep inside the closet that you're overcompensating your straightness. So Curtis pointed out in his video that Russell's executive producer role on his LinkedIn profile for Rules of Engagement Live, it was actually for a Facebook Live show, which the only online presence of this now seems to be a Facebook page with fewer than 5,000 likes and only has three past events on it. But Russell says that it ran for a year and that the main events were in person. If Curtis tries to make this case in his investigation that, oh yeah, we actually produced a show on Facebook live stream. It's like, no bro, you have no idea what you're talking about. That show was a live show only in the Hollywood area. We only created a Facebook stream for the people that wanted to come but couldn't physically attend that night. And that show was great. We packed the house. We had some of the best speakers in the business. Talk to the guys every Thursday night for a year. But it was a Hollywood exclusive show, you could only physically attend it. But it seems to say here on the Facebook page that you could only get one person to say they were going and 10 people to say that they were interested, so... So Russell ran these events with the same business partner that he has to this day, a man called Johnny True Love. The man who perpetually has an awkwardly balanced snapback on the top of his head in a desperate attempt to make himself look two inches taller, and has his own jewellery line, Swank Jewelry, which also sells pheromone fragrances. Yes, you can just spray yourself with pheromones now and women will just flock to you. And that is absolutely backed up by science. Postscript, there's actually no evidence that human pheromones even exist. So the only picture that Russell seems to have as proof of these rules of engagement live events is this one picture where he appears to be in a room with 13 people in it. This picture of him executive producing and this one clip of the VH1 winner pickup dude Cosmo which he seems to use again and again. I literally think this is the only clip that he has of this guy. But as we've learnt before, you've really got to scrape that barrel for all the social proof you can get if you're a little bit of a dodgy guy, shall we say. So Curtis in his video also called Russell out for putting logos from reputable companies on his website to insinuate that his courses have been featured on their websites. But then in Russell's rebuttal video to Curtis, he says, it clearly says our coaches have been featured on, but he changed the website after Curtis pointed it out and then he accused Curtis of not being able to read. These pub, these reputable news articles. But it says plainly on there that our coaches have been featured on these publications and they have. It's not that I lied. It's just that you, Curtis, have poor reading comprehension. So on top of everything else, um, he is a gaslighter. <laughs> and it's this kind of evidence that you need to consider when you imagine how Russell probably treats women in real life. He then deleted all of the comments on his video, apart from the ones that were positive, which was um, about five of them. And he also often disables comments on his own TikTok because apparently he can't take the heat. But remember, confidence is key. Russell even sells a course on how to be confident for $39. So he then appeared on Emily Hagen's podcast and defended himself against a lot of claims again, saying at one point that most of the people criticizing him were 12 year olds. These are people who are fucking 12 years old. Yes, Russell, you, you are on TikTok, so 
but they're also clearly the people that you're trying to sell courses to. That's life. I, will, I go through TikTok and I see people's opinions whom I disagree with all the time. And I go, you know what I do? Whoop, next one. I literally hate it when people say this too. Like, it's completely fine if you don't want to get involved with a slagging match online and assert your opinions when you don't agree with someone. Most people are like that and that's absolutely fine. But if someone wants to criticize the work that you put online, don't act all high and mightier than them just because you would ignore them. It's called free speech and we've all got the right to it. And some people feel that they need to criticize your work because they feel that it's damaging. If we lived in a world where everyone just scrolled past and ignored anything that they had a problem with or offended them and no one was ever held to account on anything, what kind of world would we live in? We need discourse, conversation, opinion, so people can make up their own minds on things with all of the information available and out there. So anyway, I decided to open the Google and uh, navigate my way to Russell's website getcoaching.co So I just had a preliminary quick glance at the website before I decided to dive deep and that was just on, you know, a quiet Sunday evening. So Russell, in his video to Curtis, he decided to explain all of the amazing features that his website has to try and justify his claims that he developed all of the all of the technology from scratch it isn't skillshare it's a complete software system designed to house educational courses handle customer billing and payments manage student progress designed to accept real-time feedback with a fully robust customer service system which i developed from scratch and yeah building that stuff or even making something close to skillshare takes an incredible amount of technical skill that i'm certain curtis couldn't even come close to russell i'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you definitely did not build this website from scratch i'm pretty damn sure that curtis who clearly has some level of technical expertise because he runs a YouTube channel could definitely build a website like this all on his own as could probably most of the people watching this video and that's because it's a WordPress and click funnel website and that's not very difficult for a person like me with a baseline knowledge of how websites work to figure that out the whole point of these services being that you sign up for the service and build your website through their very easy to use platform. You can drop components into place and it just works straight out of the box. No coding required. And it can be a blog or e-commerce or you could sell courses or a mixture of all those features on one website. It is not hard. That is the point. So basically, Russell used a website building service to build his website and then boasted about his technical expertise. Here takes an incredible amount of technical skill that I'm certain Curtis couldn't even come close to. That's like someone calling themselves a property investor just because they've thrown money into some project when they don't even know what a timber framed house is. So when you go on Russell's WordPress site and you scroll past all of the blog posts, which are actually just links to other people's YouTube videos, they're advertising a free live webinar, which you have to give your name, email address, and phone number in order to join. So I popped in my email address and what do you know? I was lucky enough to have happened to sign up to the website just in time for a free webinar with Russell and his mate, Johnny Truelove and there are limited spots available oh my god and it was only a few minutes away from starting thanks guys for joining the webinar you're not going to regret this but i need you to do yourself a favor close all your distractions that means put your phone on vibrate watch this on the desktop because this webinar tends to mess up on mobile it takes an incredible amount of technical skill so i need you to eliminate all distractions no youtube no netflix none of that put it away which means I need to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with my boys. You girls gotta go. I'm gonna bring my producer on. We're gonna see you guys in the webinar. We'll see you guys there. 
Now, of course, Russell and Johnny tell you that you need to wait till the end of the webinar for an exclusive offer. And they literally tell you to get rid of all distractions while the webinar is on. Enclose all your other tabs because they're gonna need your full attention for the next 90 minutes. Even if you lift your cursor up off the page towards other tabs while that video is playing, it gives you a huge pop-up box prompting you to stay till the end of the seminar to get this amazing wingman pamphlet. Wow, what an offer. A PDF pamphlet for sitting and watching this for 90 minutes. Hey guys, I'm Johnny Trula, the host of Rules of Engagement Live. And this is Russell Hartley. I'm the producer of the show Rules of Engagement Live. And today we're gonna to be doing the Rules of Engagement webinar, right? Right, right. It's a free, it's a free service. We're gonna be showing you guys how to attract beautiful women online and with uh, expert advice cultivated from the world's leading experts on dating, dating. pickup, relationships, right. all of these things. We're gonna jump right in. But we're, wait, we're gonna wait a second though because we got people coming into the chat. So we see them. Does this remind you a bit of the crash courses from last time? No mobiles, fine if you're late to the back of the room but it's only because you're gonna be missing out on such great content, guys. And it's definitely not us trying to exert control over your actions and to manipulate you into doing whatever we say. Now, I wasn't about to sit there and spend my Sunday night spending 90 minutes watching two slimy douche balls tell me how to pick up girls. And I, you know, had like a slight inkling that this webinar might have been pre-recorded and the boys may not have been actually live yeah coming in we get we have the monitor down here we can see people popping in the chat hello everybody so hello. Yes. Hello. So, hello. <laughs> especially due to the fact that if you just sit there on the home page you'll notice that the countdown timer for the 90 minute webinar actually just refreshes every 15 minutes so either it's pre-recorded or the boys have worked out how to rip a hole through space time. And if that's the case, then that's the thing that they should be selling courses on. <laughs> I sacrificed my email address and fake numbered Russell, and I entered the webinar. Then I simply did an inspect element on the page, lifted out the URL from the video frame, did a bit of fiddling, takes an incredible amount of technical skills, pasted the link into a new tab and Voila, there was the entire pre-recorded webinar in all of its 90 minute glory and I downloaded it in its 90 minute entirety because I did intend on watching it all. That is the torture that I put myself through for you guys. But I wanted to be able to pause and rewind and watch on two times speed so I saved it to my computer instead. Now that was the extent of my investigation for that evening. And against the boys' wishes, I'm sorry boys, I uh, closed the tab, I shut down my laptop, and that was that for the night. That evening, I received four emails from the website. Four. The first one came from someone called Brittany Walker, who I'm gonna take a wild stab and say that she doesn't exist. Brittany Walker here, assistant to Russell Hartley here at Get Coaching. Russell noticed you left the webinar early and wanted me to follow up with you. See below. We wanted to make sure you had a chance to attend the full webinar, so we posted the replay for you. You can watch it here. Be sure to get it while the replay is still online. We hope you enjoy the event. Then below that email, she copied in a totally <laughs> legit email from one version of Russell, from one of the uh, different space-time dimensions that he created in order to be in six different live webinars at once. Yeah, him. Hey, Brittany, I noticed George. That was my fake name. That's real good disguise. Real good disguise, I know. I noticed George left the Maximize Dating Apps webinar early yesterday. Do you mind checking in on him for me? Just make sure everything is okay with him or find out if he didn't think the webinar was useful for him. Let him know that we will be taking down the webinar soon so he should watch it while it's still online. And don't forget the link this time. Thanks, Russell. Don't forget the link this time, Brittany. <laughs> women. She probably hasn't had her bubba tea this morning. Then I received another email, this time directly from Russell himself, telling me he's temporarily reserved my slot for the text game guide, how to text a girl and guarantee she won't flake. I am confident you'll get amazing results, but if it doesn't work for any reason, you'll get a full refund. Although I've never had a refund for this. I wonder if that's perhaps because you've never sold one. <laughs> 
Then I got another email saying thanks for attending the webinar. <laughs> we went for a full 90 minutes and had a blast. It wasn't exactly a blast for me. Also, which version of you are we talking about, Russell? Which iteration of you in the dimensions are we talking about now, Russell? <laughs> and then he says I need to fill out a questionnaire. I'm not kidding when I say that we can change life. We have helped thousands. I regularly receive text messages from previous clients who thank me for changing their lives and they mean it. So really just shoving the whole unsubstantiated social proof thing down my throat now. We can actually change your dating life and beyond, but we only take on the right clients. And then he gave me a link to my free copy of the Wingman pamphlet. So I didn't need to stay till the end of the webinar to get that in the end. And then there was a fourth email that night. Russell boasted about all of his pickle artist friends and really pushing the whole social proof sales pitch at me again. And then he said as an exclusive offer, he was gonna give me access to a webinar called Maximize Dating Apps, but the link was broken. Takes an incredible amount of technical skill. And then on Monday, I got another two emails and on the first one, the first thing you see is an auto-playing gif of Russell in bed with two naked sleeping girls next to him. And I really don't know if those women consented to that or not. And then there was this sob story about him being so nerdy and awkward around girls at school. But now he's done everything with high value girls so much that he's just lost count of all the things that he's done. And then in the second email, he just exercised the, the scarcity sales tactic again. Ooh, I've saved you a spot on this webinar. Then on Wednesday, I got another email which began with the same image again of Russell sat in the hotel room with 13 people on one of his rules of engagement events. Then on Thursday, I got another email with one of the screenshots from his students again, telling him how amazing his course is and how he gets these text messages all the time. Then on Friday, I got another email with the, that clip of Cosmo right at the top again, that same clip of Cosmo. I'm starting now to think that this is definitely the only clip that he has of this Cosmo guy. More scarcity sales tactics. You have to sign up today to get a slot. Oh, and you have to apply for the course. He doesn't just accept anyone. I had a little flip through Russell's pamphlet. That sounds like a euphemism. The first few pages are a sales pitch for the course, for the paid course, which fair enough, it's a free pamphlet. What do you expect? Images of women are scattered throughout. Now, I've got to be honest, there was, I would say some good advice in this pamphlet, but it was just an exact rehash of everything that was in the free webinar, but just in written form. So it didn't really give any extra value, I don't think. But there were a lot of good points, like for example, how to use good pictures on your dating profile to get more swipes, how to initiate conversations, how to not look too desperate, which like it was all stuff that I totally get. Like it is a massive turnoff when guys come across a little bit too clingy, mainly because the woman's probably thinking, am I eventually going to have to take out a restraining order against this guy? Which, fun fact, I've been there, but there were just some glaring issues in there, which I just, I don't think these things need to be included. And they used before and after pictures of Russell and Johnny to show what they were like before and after learning pickup. <laughs> and uh, Johnny is with some pictures of models that he had hired for photo shoots in the after shots. And Russell looking skinny and nerdy before, but now he's put on a suit and is with a blonde lady. Wow, such a transformation. So then they tell you to imagine your 10, i.e. imagine your ideal woman. What does she look like? What is her job, if anything? What do you do for fun together? What would life be like with your 10? It's exactly the same selling tactics as these MLMs or these get rich quick courses. They tell you to visualize what your life would be like if it were perfect. What house do you have? What wife do you have? What car do you have? Do you have more time to spend with your family? And then they go on to promise that they can give you all of these exact things if you just give them a small investment. Be specific in your visualization. Write this down in the notes on your phone or computer. Read it loud daily. You are what you believe you are. I'm getting Rachel Hollis flashbacks now. 
Women have tremendous value in their beauty and that is natural for them. Men have to work to increase their value and we need to simply accept that. Besides, do you think you deserve a 10 if you are a helpless loser? We have to better ourselves to be able to provide for and protect our loved ones. If a woman sees that another high value woman finds a man attractive, that woman will also find that man attractive. There must be something about that guy that makes him attractive if she thinks he's attractive. Okay, so let's hash that out, shall we? Who's an objectively attractive, high value woman? Kate Moss. She's a supermodel, so therefore she's a high value woman. Therefore, vicariously, I find Pete Doxy attractive. Think about it. You are either born hot or you are not. Cosmetics are great, but for the most part, you have it or you don't. Luckily for us men, women do not care as much about our born looks slash appearance. They care about our value. So the strategy for this game should be clear. Constantly be increasing your value and demonstrating it to hot women, period. What women want. Attraction switches. Number one, leader of men. Number two, social proof with women, pre-selection. Number three, has resources or access. Number four, protector of loved ones. Number five, healthy social circle of male slash female friends. Number six, lives an interesting life. Number seven, smile. Physical attractiveness for women is just an indicator that the man has or will have the above characteristics. Smiling communicates that you are comfortable in your life and that you have a good time and are happy. What men want. Attraction switches. Number one, the woman is objectively attractive, body, face, proportions, plus other specialized interests or kinks. Nice to have. Career driven, even tempered, smart enough to be a real partner in your life and business. <laughs> postscript. Above all things is her hotness. The rest of the list is just a bonus but not a requirement. All of this considered, women learn very quickly how to demonstrate their value to men. It is pretty simple really and they start to pick this up at a very young age. They will say things like, this outfit is cute, or take pictures of themselves with captions like, feeling cute, etc. Showcasing themselves is their way of demonstrating their value to men whether they are consciously aware of it or not. Comparing what women have to do to demonstrate value versus what men have to do to demonstrate value seems a little unfair at first glance, but this should not make you feel angry or upset. You should want to be all of the things that demonstrate value to women. If you didn't want to be a high value man, you do not deserve to be with a high value woman anyways. Keep this in mind. Women have the power before sex, Men have the power after sex. Communicating value. Women have to be hot. Men have to do. Looking at the woman in the leftmost picture makes us go meh or completely look over her altogether. Meh. She is not effectively showcasing her value to men, but the man in the rightmost photo is absolutely killing it by triggering multiple attraction switches. Number two, social proof. And number four, protector of loved ones at once and is effectively showcasing his value to women. So Russell here uses a picture of the Ace family to prove his point. Both family pictures, but he says that the woman in this picture is not effectively showing her worth to men. But the man in this picture, which is basically the same picture, is effectively showing his worth to women because he is showing himself as a protector of loved ones and pre-selection. I don't know if I'm missing something here, but what he's communicating here in this picture to me is that um, he's a married man with a fucking child. So I don't speak for all women, but um, that for me would be a hard no. And then he goes on to show a picture of that same woman from the Ace family posing in a more provocative manner. And then he says that in that image she is effectively showcasing her value to men. And now all of a sudden she's hot when she wasn't before. Is that perhaps because there isn't another man in the picture who effectively in your mind owns her because she is an object to you? Is that perhaps why? And if I've taken any of that out of context, Russell, please Please let me know exactly what you really meant 
by those quotes and then accuse me of not being able to read. Gaslight me, daddy. Now, getting onto the price of the courses. So, Russell, being the king of confidence, has a course called Confidence is Key, and that's $39. And there's some testimonials on the page, but the link to see all reviews is broken. Takes an incredible amount of technical skill. And then Russell's text game guide, which teaches you how to not get ghosted by girls, is normally $399, but is now only $39. Wow, what a saving. But then if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, it's normally $997 altogether. So now it's gone down to $39 from $997. But only for today. Russell, just be honest with me for one second. Have you have you ever sold this godforsaken course for $997? It also just seems to be that price all the time. Surprise, surprise. So more manufactured pressure selling from scarcity that doesn't even exist. And then Russell's masterclass is the low, low price of $997. The only course which hasn't now been reduced to $39. But uh, don't worry if that's a bit high because you can, you can pay for it in three easy installments of $499. So that's only $500 extra that you'll be paying Russell for the privilege of paying it in three separate installments. Oh, and I forgot it's normally, it's normally $3,497. Wow, what a saving. So I'm not sure how this kind of misleading advertising is policed in the US, but you've probably got different laws for different states, haven't you? But here in the UK, you would have every legitimate reason in the world to actually report this website to the Advertising Standards Authority. Oh, and there's apparently 116 reviews giving the course an overall rating of 4.8, but that links to nothing as well. <laughs> I tried searching for reviews of Russell's courses on third party review websites, but I couldn't find anything at all. So I've not actually found evidence of Russell ever getting even one sale, to be honest. The only evidence of any reviews that I've found of Russell's courses online have been via his own channels. He also has 10 video testimonials that he uses all of the time. They're all listed there on his website and he uses them in his webinars all the time as well. And I'm just going to say that it's, it's very easy nowadays to pay someone on Fiverr to do a video testimonial for your company. They call themselves spokespeople and they are everywhere. Anyway, I filled out this little questionnaire on the site which is supposed to tell you which of the three courses on the website would be the perfect one for you in your situation. So I said George was under 18 and was earning less than $30,000 a year, but I was willing to try and get the funds somehow for the course. And what course did the website suggest for me, do you think? One of the $39 courses? or the $1,000 course. It was the masterclass for $997. That's what it suggested that I go for. Turns out, doesn't seem to matter what you enter into that questionnaire, it will always tell you to go for the $997 course. Unless you say on the last question that you're not willing to find the funds for the course, and then instead you get taken to a video where Russell and Johnny are telling you to check out all of the free content. So they're basically taking those people and pouring them back into the top of the sales funnel again. And you say that we're meant to trust you, Russell, and believe all these little stories you tell in your videos that sound like they're written by a 12 year old boy on heat. I keep seeing so much lately that women are living their life on easy mode and I'm here to tell you that that's absolutely true. But only in direct proportion to how pretty they are and how much they put themselves out there like on social media or whatever. Because what men value is their youth and beauty so we're happy to flex our socioeconomic status to pay for them and take them on expensive trips and like take them to cool parties, stuff like that. 
And girls, especially on social media, are super aware of this. That's why basically every TikTok trend is just some new excuse to show some part of their body. That's just marketing. And I'm all for it. I mean, some of my best relationships have started from a thirst trap. And some women will say, oh, that's just shallow, or there are white knights out there that'll be like, well, I'm not shallow, I go for personality. Really? If you were physically attracted to her in the first place, you wouldn't have even talked to her at all. What are you talking about? And as a man, you may be living your life on hard mode now, but if you're willing to work, you can increase your marketability as a high value mate every single year forever. And women don't have that luxury. Instead, they get easy mode for now. So Russell also defended himself against his comments about women living life on easy mode in his response video to Curtis. And it was a pretty weak response. And what I mean by that, what it was meant to be interpreted as, and a lot of guys understood this, some people didn't. When you have a very attractive woman that puts herself out on social media, let's say Daisy Keach has, I don't know, 10 million followers or something like this, right? A person like that, right? So when she posts things on social media, she gets access to very expensive luxury vacations, free trips, free travel, free parties, all extra benefits that maybe some others don't get. And Curtis goes on to say like, oh, well, women have periods, so it's not that easy. And that's on period. Nobody's talking about that. In general, I think that women have life actually very difficult, but nowhere did I say that women don't have periods. They have to worry about things in their life or whatever. I'm just saying that very attractive women have access to certain luxuries and benefits that others don't when they're out there on social media. How it turned into anything but that blows my mind. Oh, things that are obvious to some are just so lost on others. He basically defended himself by saying that what he really meant was that women who have millions of followers on Instagram get free stuff sometimes, and that that's all that's all that he meant. Because no men with millions of followers ever get free stuff, and all women apparently have millions of followers on Instagram. Obviously. Well, anyway, I noticed that this particular TikTok here was interesting because, to be honest, if you think about it, it just didn't need to be included in order to sell courses on Pickup, did it? So he, he could have just said that thing about increasing your marketability and left it like that. But I noticed he was saying things very reminiscent of what Red Pillars believe. And then I came to realize that he's probably trying to sell to these people this community of men who all believe that the feminism movement has actually led to women living life too easily and now men have it hard. And whether Russell believes the whole red pill philosophy himself or not, that was clearly who he was trying to sell to when he made that TikTok. That was clearly the belief system that he was referencing. And then I just noticed all these things about his sales tactics that just mirrored like the stories that you see on that subreddit. Guys are frustrated and confused about women and they come there because they want answers. And the red pill community comes along and gives them answers and tells them that they can control the situation. When you're a 15 year old boy or a 15 year old girl, the other gender is confusing and weird. And when you're a teenage boy, you probably want instant answers about how to get those girls that are so confusing and weird to you. So I think Russell's on TikTok trying to get hold of those same, you know, teenage boys. The ones that would end up on the red pill subreddit at some point, dazed and confused and looking for answers. So these young boys will just stumble upon the red pill community wanting answers and they'll be met with someone from the inside of the community just giving them all of the answers that they want and the answers that give them control of the situation but in reality there's no clear-cut answers but as we've learned before it's very easy to sell someone a lie if the person wants to believe that lie to begin with so the red pill communities main philosophies are the old tips that your dad or the media or feminism is telling you about how to approach girls are no longer applicable in the modern world everything that you've been told is a lie feminism happened and women have 
equal rights now and that's great but feminism is also a sexual strategy feminism puts women in the best position to find mates so it's like playing chess against these feminist ideas in order to pick up women women say that they want nice men who are themselves but what they really want is uh, bad boys ringleaders and dominant and decisive men who are also physically strong and this is called your frame also telling unhappy men to be themselves or to be nice guys is a recipe for disaster and then another one is pre-selections so appearing attractive to high value women makes you attractive to other high value women high value meaning good looking and then finally women are all hypergamic 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 i don't know which means that they're only ever interested in a man's status in order to elevate her own status so what i've seen of the red pill community it seems to be consisting of a lot of anecdotal evidence of bad experiences with women backed up with a lot of unsubstantiated pseudoscience and then as a result of that the whole red pill movement has sort of become a a school of thought which has presented to lost and vulnerable men as a sort of truth which is a hard pill to swallow but you must swallow it in order to be in control of women again so they'll make it sound convincing by using some dodgy armchair evolutionary psychology in order to explain women's actions so a woman is picky and she wants a man with good dna for breeding but who will also protect her children and her but a man just wants as many hot women as possible in order to spread his seed so after browsing the dark world of the red pill i'm not doubting that many of these men have had really honestly terrible experiences with terrible women who've treated them terribly some of the stories are really really sad honestly but this community gives them a sort of simple clear black and white answer to a very complicated issue so these men will sort of initially go in and think well some of this is a bit extreme but i agree with this and then once they've agreed with one thing maybe the next thing that's a little bit more extreme doesn't seem so crazy and then after a while they just get a little bit indoctrinated i found an interesting article which featured some stories from ex members of the red pill community so i just thought i'd read out some quotes from this zhao also believes the red pill preys on those who are easily manipulated be they young nerdy insecure virgins or simply going through a difficult time in life most of the ex red pillars i spoke to were teenagers when they became involved in the subreddit and most say they were exceptionally lonely at the time. Callum, a 29 year old from Western Pennsylvania, has a mild case of Asperger's syndrome and speculates that a great many people on the red pill are likely on the spectrum. He became involved with the online men's rights forum at 19. Though he had spent much of his time at school not caring about girls, he became insecure when he started college. When I turned to the Red Pill subreddit, I immediately felt like I'd figured it out. Like a cult, they gave you a few obvious truths. Men should be more confident, work towards physical fitness, women aren't divine perfect beings to be worshipped but flawed people, etc. I definitely think that this enabled me to slide into accepting the more toxic beliefs of the subreddit. Anytime someone said something outright sexist or alarming, too much for me, others would interject and say that those are just being angry and we should let them vent. So an element of truth that I do believe in from their philosophy is that these men are clearly lonely and sad and they're being told to just be themselves. Find just the way they are and they'll find the perfect woman if they're just themselves. It is terrible advice to someone in that situation in my opinion because what you need to do in that situation and what the red pill community does advise that you do to an extent is to work on yourself first they don't ever seem to advise that you go and get therapy but i would advise that if you're feeling like that then you should go and get therapy also you should get physically healthy you should exercise and you should eat healthily and those two things alone will just boost your confidence so much i think that will help you become more yourself because 
If you're sad and lonely and depressed, then that isn't your true self, is it, really? That's not the ideal mindset in which to attract a partner. But all of these more extreme views about women having it easier than men, just they just don't make any sense. And then when that was pointed out to Russell, he just sort of used some mental gymnastics and acted like he was just extremely dumbfounded that someone couldn't understand what he really meant by the statement, which Tim me is a red flag of someone lying through their teeth and I'm starting to become a bit of an expert on liars now. But these young red pill recruits, they want somewhere to direct their anger and their frustration. And now Russell's come along on TikTok and he's just reinforcing these problematic opinions onto these young guys, these these teenage guys, probably a lot of them. It's all in order just to sell some shitty courses. And he's not even keeping it a secret, really, if you look at the picture that he uses at the end of his YouTube videos. To be fair to Russell, though, and all pickup artists. I understand why there's a perceived need for them. Guys do get into a sort of headspace where they think they're they think they're destined to be sexually inactive forever or they'll get hung up on this one girl that rejected them one time and their confidence can just take a nosedive it's similar with women as well and then we get r slash nice guys and red pill and it does happen with women as well but it's it's more common with men to get into that sort of mindset i think for some reason it's not men's fault i think society leads a lot of women to think that they don't need to approach guys ever they just they just sort of expect guys to approach them but girls i think we need to sort of get out of that headspace a little bit i was i was certainly guilty of it when i was single i think if you're single and you like a guy and is safe approach him anyway you didn't think you were getting away without a without a song did you russell so i've decided to make a track using some samples from your favorite room in the house which is clearly the bathroom and i've named it after what you give me russell and uh that's a dap
the three pound tier. And that is Christine McPherson, Andrea S, Egg Katz, Maria Sellapak, Jill Compare, Annie McGrath, Hayden, Team Incredible Limited, Kayla Taylor, Adam Elder, Hannah Farrell, Laura Ginsey, Kelly Green, Ryan Blacklock, Emma Clark, Louisa Atkins, Patricia Mann, B S, Christine Burrington, Charge Stewart, Nicole, Ola Breslin, Brandon Ingram, T C B, Teresa Schultz, Rachel Kism, Bailey, Ruthie Weaker, Nathan Arrow, Samuel Headley, Parisa, Memarian Lou. Victoria, Maura Labisi, Hannah, Eli, Natalie, Kim Kotadi, and Kamsh. And now for the five, the five pound here. Are you ready? Catherine Clay, Nick Gray, Jesse of Earth, Jordan, Amy, Michelle Collins, Marty, Pastef, and Haliki, Alex, Alice B, Jessica Hadland, Hank Hu, In Girid Her 96, Valerie Mancomway. Corey Dyke, Alice, and Gastro Whoops. And finally, my £10 a month tier heroes. Nancy Kawita, Dia Armstrong, Emily Ratzma German, Lauren Castle, Alex Victoria, Emmy J. Dan, Ashley Bird. Wow! Yeah! Thank you very much, guys. Sign up for my Patreon to get your name wrapped at the end of a video and for extra podcasts and things that I upload. Thank you. Thank you very much.